Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Food Enthusiast. If this is your first time joining, I'm Dara Bunjan. I am a PR maven, food stylist, food writer, and a frustrated baker. We hope that you'll enjoy the show today and join the conversation. Today's guest was awarded the title of Chef of the Year in 2018 by the Restaurant Association of Maryland. The former two-term past president of the American Culinary Federation, Greater Baltimore Chapter, he also was the 2000 Chapter Chef of the Year. Say hello to Executive Chef George Batless of the Manor Tavern located in Moncton, Maryland, where they do fabulous dinners of Maryland cuisine, banquets, weddings. Uh, hi, George. Hello, Dara. Thanks for having me. It's so kind of you to have me guest show. Well, well, it's my pleasure. So how is the manor turning at this time? Uh, what's going on today at the Manor Tavern? Um, we're out for dinner five nights a week, um, and the gardens are coming in strong. We just uh, put in a dozen picnic tables and umbrellas in a new picnic area at the Manor Tavern. Uh, but don't you have, a, you have a side patio that's open air too, correct, that you're seating people? Yes, we have about 100 seats uh, in our large tent that we use for events has been distanced. Uh, with tables and chairs, and then we also have the front patio and the side terrace. So that gives so, us about 100 seats outside. That's fabulous. And under cover really is the um, patio and the, well, you have, I saw the picture, you have umbrellas on the tables outside, so people are covered, correct? Yeah, the brick, the brick patio across the parking lot, we uh, just added two bocce ball courts. And uh, we're set up for cornhole pits, and we just had a portable bar delivered. So we got a dozen picnic tables, and they are all um, topped with umbrellas so that we are expanding our range as far as using the acreage at the Manor Tavern for multi-purpose now. But it's people, if they haven't been out there for a while, because the ownership changed, what, about four or five years ago? How many years ago was yeah. it? About eight, and I've been the executive chef for five. Well, if you haven't been out there, it is not only just the great restaurant and the great cuisine that George oversees as executive chef, but they have their own huge garden, you know, just huge. <laughs> and uh, they have, um, they they're now have bees, so you're doing your own honey yeah. and you have chickens, you're doing your own eggs. And yes. uh, what you're not doing, you're getting from local suppliers. So you're really farm to table. Yeah, we're, we're pretty well entrenched in the community. And that's why it was so critical for us to get back open with curbside and then getting the uh, dining rooms and the exterior distance because people really do rely on us. They feel very comfortable and know that we manage um, the environment very well. And we have a great staff. And so um, there was a clamoring. It took us a little bit of time to get everything on point. Um, but once we were able to open with curbside, um, it was nice to get back online with all the local vendors. That's fabulous. And you're not seating in the dining room anymore, correct? It's all exterior? Um, the dining rooms are available. We generally only open the saddle room. For Father's Day, we had a, a table with young children and it was a little warm out. And so we were able to have them in their own dining room. So we have the resource and everything is distance, but um, most guests really, really enjoy being outside. And um, what I wanted to talk to you about, so it's just dinner. You're not doing lunch. Well, or we opened July 4th, we opened for our first lunch. And so we're open Saturdays now for lunch and Sunday for brunch. So Saturday we open at 12 and go straight through dinner. Um, we seat until eight on Saturday and brunch we open at uh, noon. And then we go straight through to dinner. We seat until eight. 
but I think it's going to be a couple more weeks till we do weekday lunch yet. Okay. Just don't want to forget that if anybody wants to make reservations, you need to call. And that's 410-771-8155. You can find out the menu and everything at uh, themannertavern.com. If you want to follow them on Facebook and social media, it's at Manor Tavern. Uh, George, I want to talk a little bit about your background. Um, I think uh, it's always interesting to me and I think to other people what put people on the path to go into culinary uh, was your uh, when you your home was your mother a great cook was food an important factor um, I did uh, realize at some point that I was going my career was going to be in the culinary arts um, I started um, cooking dinner at home as both my parents worked, um, I would start dinner at the request of my mother. Um, and so it was a little bit challenging the first time I was handling a whole raw chicken to roast in the oven. Um, I was in elementary school. And so I came to realize that chicken is actually a bird. Um, and I wasn't very excited at the time because I was standing on a chair over the sink, pulling out the gizzards and that. And uh, was really kind of taken aback, um, but I was able to get over that. And then um, I have a got my godfather was a career um, culinarian, and so from there I kind of just progressed and always realized that was my goal was to become an executive chef. If you see me looking over, I'm just double checking for the show and. Uh... See if there's any questions I seem to need to refresh here. Um, let's talk about you went to culinary school and then you moved to France. That was quite a I big did. jump. Yeah, it was. Uh, and now in these times, you know, I guess I can better understand being a parent, um, how distressing it was to my family at the time. Um, because travel even general travel right now is, is a challenge. And so to pack up and move to Europe, um, for me, it was uh, uh, my grad school um, to work in Paris and to work in Burgundy. I did on stage at uh, Chez Pochon in Paris, which um, was one of the most notable traders, caterers um, in Paris. We, I actually got to watch I wasn't allowed to participate because every night uh, Fauchon's produced dinner for Jacques Chirac, um, the Ooh. prime minister at the time. And, um, but that was very fortunate for me that um, I was one of the first Americans to do on stage at Fauchon's. And then um, I also got to help. Um, it was actually beneficial to be an American at the time because there was a brasserie that opened across the Seine from Notre Dame Cathedral, Pickett's American Bistro, and uh, they needed some support staff and it was owned by Americans. So um, I got to further immerse myself in ordering in French um, and learning about the purveyors and deliveries in their country. So that um, was uh, eight, 86, 87. Did you spend a year there? How long were you in, in France? Two years, I finished up at um, Auberge La Bersaudière, which is in Nitri in the Bourgogne. And um, it's interesting because they are truly farm to table because the owner would call the uh, farmer that raised rabbits and put their order in at night. And we would go to monasteries and abbeys to pick up cheeses for the cheese plate. And so it was more... We would go to Rangis with a couple of refrigerated trucks to pick up orders once a week, but it was more the products that came from the local farms that we processed and did a lot of terrine and charcuterie work. Um, so it was invaluable and there's still, um, I have great friends in France that have come to stay with me and visit with me. Um, and it's a relationship that I, that I cherish. You know, not many young chefs can pick up and go. So um, 
what a wonderful opportunity for you and to, you know, I, re I have been to Foshon, so uh, I'm very impressed with that. Uh, you came back to the States and let's see, um, you worked at Peabody Court when it was a conservatory and considered the premier yeah. restaurant in the city along with Harbor Court. Um, where else? Delessio's, where else have you worked? Yeah, I was fortunate to um, start working in the country club um, circuit because the resources of private clubs um, is exceptional. Um, of course, Peabody Court um, or uh, the restaurant that I worked in were, you know, fortunate to have strong leadership and help mentor um, my desire to learn and use the tools that I acquired in, in Europe. So I got to do some pastry work at Peabody Court. Um, Michael D'Alessio and Cindy D'Alessio um, took me in there. And then I went to the Center Club, which kind of was my first uh, cutting of my teeth um, of the club um, environment and uh, with pastry chefs and the type of service that are offered at, at private clubs. I, over time, was the executive chef at Hillendale Country Club for six years at Maryland Golf and Country Club and Wakefield Valley Golf Club. Um, but my passion, I think, is in independent, uh, owner-driven establishments. Well, you have a fabulous opportunity with the Manor Tavern. What a, a stunning place and atmosphere. It's in steeplechase country. It's out in Moncton. Um, you know, some people know that uh, back in the late 90s, I was the catering and banquet manager there, and that was a long time ago. Um, but uh, let, let's move on. Um, you know, when I posted that I was going to be doing the show with you, and I put it up, wow, what a response from other chefs around the city and people. Oh. I, I think everybody consider you a chef's chef. You really have the admiration of many, many people. So I'm thrilled that you shared the time to be on the show. I wanna talk about some things that are traditional at the Manor Tavern, like Karn, who is the pastry chef. She was there back in the 90s and she's still there doing pastry, am I correct? This is true, she's an integral part of our daily success. And it is, it's such a team and family environment, as you know, being alumni, um, there's so many people that have history and are attached to the well-being of the Manor Tavern and to be, I consider myself the keeper of the tavern at this point, as I've been the general manager for the last two years. Um, it's, it is a, a huge responsibility and um, the people of the area take it very personally uh, how well the Manor goes. And so Miss um, Carm makes all the desserts. So other than Priggles ice cream, um, she touches and makes every one. We use the eggs from the chickens in the dessert. Um, they're certified. And she really helps keep balance um, to the whole operation because she manages some of the product beyond the pastry department. And if anything changes dramatically, be assured she will let you know. <laughs> she is a woman who knows how to speak her mind. When I was there, every I was hooked on the gumbo, which is still there, which is fabulous. Um, and they can get people, if you go out there and haven't been, get the gumbo, at least get a small bowl. And you, you can manner, mannerize it by adding additional crab meat, can't you? Yes. And it's also topped with rice and scallions. It's, uh, it's definitely become a big tradition. Um, last Saturday, I was the opening manager and I fielded a phone call at 10 o'clock and it was a guest that wanted to know when we were going to be open because it was the first time they were coming out of quarantine and the first thing they wanted to have was a bowl of gumbo. And so it means more to people than you can imagine. Well, there's certain things that are very traditional there. Uh, there was a 
in Maryland club, which had like a crab meat and uh, turkey. Does, is that something that's still done there during the summer? The fried green tomato Oscar? I didn't. No, no, no. It was a club sandwich. But oh, the fried green tomato. Dear. Right. It's not currently on the menu. So we've, we've revamped our offerings um, to be kind of uh, comfort food and, and to be something that people and our wine list as well. Um, it was a evolving wine list and evolving menu. And um, we really had gained great recognition for our culinary depth. But we felt that um, with COVID and the quarantine and the distress that everybody was experiencing, we revamped the menu and, and wanted to give people something unique, but something more comforting to them to help them bridge the difference. And, and what we're doing is changing the menu every couple of weeks to include some of those traditional favors, favorites. But yeah, the ultimate uh, seafood club is with a whole crab cake and shrimp salad and fried green tomato. I'll, uh, I'll add that to the list. But when we reopen for lunch in August, I think it will be on the menu. One of the, there's a couple, there's one thing that you brought back and then there's one thing that's new. You're doing a smash burger. Isn't this new on the menu? It's yeah, like so burgers. Yeah, so for family, yeah, it's a, it's a combination of um, brisket, short rib, ground chuck, and bacon, ground bacon. Um, and the Franzoni family uh, from their quarantine commissary on the Eastern Shore um, put, worked on it for several days. And so we were able to put it in play about a week ago. And so their thin patties cooked well done with the secret sauce and um, bread and butter chip pickles. And it's been a big hit, cheddar cheese, and of course, bacon's in the meat, so it all renders together. And um, I think it's definitely a keeper. Um, it, it's, we well, just uh, posted a couple posts with that burger from one of our guests. And you were doing at different times, the only place that I know, you were doing a whole beer can chicken. Uh, and I see well, that you're doing, are you doing that again? Um, we are roasting the whole beer can chicken, but we're pulling the meat and we've turned it into a beer can chicken sandwich um, because we have the, a certain number of entrees and steaks on the menu. And we wanted to bring it back because people were asking for it. So we softened the menu up a little bit so that people could still come and nosh in the evening with Brussels sprouts or a sandwich. So with the addition of the smash burger and the beer can chicken and a blackened salmon BLT wrap, we wanted to make sure that we could do as much as we could for everybody. I have a question here. If you see me turning off, I just keep looking and they're coming in. Have you, the question is, have you had to make any significant changes in the way you cook in response to COVID? Faltering supply chain, staff unavailability, unavailability other? Yes, and it's, uh, our purveyors have done a fantastic job, but they have had um, several challenges at different times. And so the fortunate with the volume of business we traditionally do, we uh, have a range of purveyors that um, are somewhat closer to the broadliners than niche vendors. Um, so the menu is actually um, broken down to uh, product strength. And so um, in the kitchen, some of the processes have changed. Um, August, we'll probably go back to our hand cut fries. Um, and everybody in the kitchen is required to wear gloves and masks at all time because when you have um, the guests that we have and the people of the community are still coming out week by week where they have, it's the first dining out because we're in the country and it's open air. Um, our servers also wear masks um, all their entire service. Um, and so we want to make sure people feel comfortable knowing the process that we're engaged in and know that they're how important it is to us to be here for them. Some of you, if you're just tuning in, we're with executive chef George Batless of the Manor Tavern out in Moncton, Maryland. Uh, that's the manortavern.com. 
I have two questions that I always ask, and uh, we'll try to wrap it up. The first one is, do you have a major culinary fail that you're willing to talk about? Major culinary failure? Mm hmm. Hmm. I've talked about you know, me putting. Go ahead. Um, it's funny because one of the bigger things that I work with as a team in the kitchen is I, I try to actually reference when I make mistakes because um, we don't expect everyone to be perfect. We expect them to be able to manage situations um, and processes, but we also want to afford people the latitude that we do understand that it's an imperfect world and it's better communicated when there's a problem than not. Um, so I can assure you I've had my, my fair number of things that I had a vision that probably took me three or four times to work out. Um, and, and in our team, um, when we have a challenge in the dining room or we make a mistake, the rule of thumb is that it comes to me first because I want to be the one walking into any situation to make sure that we do the best that we can to resolve it. But um, I'm going to have to think on that one. Maybe I can come back to you at the end. Okay. Well, I'm going to throw you, I'll, I'll just tell you a couple that I tell One of the ones that I did, and it's a repeat for some of the people who have listened, was, uh, you know, my mother might have served ham in the house. We were Jewish, but there was never sausage. And this was early on in my dating, and somebody wanted spaghetti with sausage. Well, I didn't know from sausage, and I made this tomato sauce, but I put in pickled, <laughs> pickled sausage. It was disgusting. I picked it up and threw it away. <laughs> so that's what I'm saying. It could be early on when you were 12 years old or anything like that. I mean, uh, it was. I just posted, I did a blueberry crostata. Everybody loved the picture, but when I cut it, the pastry was so tough, I ended up throwing the whole thing away. Got 140 likes, but it didn't taste like anything. So I throw it back to yeah. you. Does that jog any memories for you? I remember one of the early times that I did a, um, a marinated shrimp to be grilled, and the, the days got away from me as far as I had a production schedule of you know, what day, what was going to happen. And I marinated the shrimp a day earlier and, you know, pulled them the next day. And they basically were falling apart because the acid had overworked the texture of the protein. And so it was kind of uh, an expensive education. Um, but, you know, I guess it was, I've always kind of been fearless and trusting, um, you know, my caring for food um, and that sometimes can get you in trouble because you know you know that you have some process and you're venturing into a new area and I'm never shy about venturing into a new format okay now final question I bet you can't wait until this is over uh -oh. <laughs> uh, okay here's it's you here's, so it's okay <laughs> uh, yeah because it's me we're friends we're friends um, yeah, and the final question, <laughs> the final question is, what question didn't I ask you that I should have? Um, hmm. I guess what, what's next or, you know, where am I going? Where's my career going? I've, you know, been, I've embraced myself with the Manor Tavern so much, um, and I was thinking that if you were to ask that question, um, it's funny because with all this change and with the COVID and the challenges and the pain that people have um, been forced to face, um, <clears throat> for me, my way of handling it is to look forward, not to look back. I mean, we all want it to be the way that it was, but I think the way the only way to get there is to look forward and to work on process 
and changing as we've changed, adding the picnic tables, the bocce ball to give people more reasons to come here because I think guests need more reasons or they need more support or they need to feel more comfortable. And so so, um, we have great ownership and it was really their drive to open up the property so that people can come and get curbside and not have to drive all the way back home and eat their food up where they can actually walk across the parking lot and play cornhole. And so I think for those that have not made it, it's uh, it's been a very sad and unfortunate time. Um, but for those of us that are still here, it's very important us to do as much as we can for the people that um, have faith in us and um, have expectation for us to help. Um, so I'm not sure if that was a question or the answer, but. Well, that's fine. You know, it, it's, it's, you know, it's the hospitality business and how do we approach it and how did the Franzonis approach it and how do you, I mean, you're, you know, it's still all about the clientele and making them happy. So um, aren't you doing some music too? Sure. I'm, I'm, are you doing music like out on the patio or something? Are you still yes, there? We, um, we always have music Thursday nights and that's a traditional. Yes. And we've added um, some Saturdays and some Sundays. We have uh, the Mayo family blue grass band that plays on some Sundays. Um, and on our website, on the calendar, it should be updated with all the new music we've added. And I'll tell you, if ever there was a time that it creates a bright spot, um, a couple here last Thursday, and it happened to be their 40th anniversary and their first time out for dinner. And I can't say how many times people have said, because I do a lot of table visits, um, wow, thank you so much. And it's hard to realize how important it is, these things. It, it leads back to a normalcy that, you know, we're missing. And to go out, have a drink, um, or pick up curbside and go sit at a picnic table out there and eat it. Um, you know, I'm looking, I've been talking about this, and I have a group of friends who, you know, we want to, this is, I want to go, I want to go just because it is open and I feel safe out there to come and have a meal. I know that you were very busy and with everything that's going on and I will probably be out there soon. Let me remind people before we, uh, before I say goodbye to you and just then make us a couple of notes. Uh, we are here with chef George Botless, executive chef. It is the Manor Tavern out in Moncton, Maryland. You need to call for reservations, 410-771-8155. The website is themanortavern.com, and you can find them on Instagram and Facebook at Manor Tavern. George, thank you so much. As always, we'll be talking soon anyhow. I really appreciate you sharing your time. Stay safe. There, it's always a pleasure to visit with you, as you know. Okay. Thanks again. <laughs> Thank you. And before we close out, I want to tell you next week, our guest is going to be Sergio Malarin. He's the co-founder of Mobtown Fermentation. And those are the products Wild Kombucho and Acaro Yerba Mate. So that should be a very interesting interview. As always, I thank you for sharing this interview and with your friends. If you need to contact me or reach out to me, contact me at food at jmoreliving.com. You can find this interview on the Facebook page, Jaymore Living, or jmoreliving.com. Until next week, may your plates always, always remain full. Have a great week.